the world most honored watch is Longines. Longines watches have won 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals, and more honors for accuracy than any other timepiece. Longines, the world's most honored watch, is made and guaranteed by the Longines Whitnall Watch Company. It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the vital issues of the hour. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co editors for the Longines Chronoscope this evening? Mr. Henry Hazlitt, political economist and contributing editor of Newsweek magazine, and Mr. William Bradford Huey, editor of the American Mercury. Our guest for this evening is the Honorable Burke Hickenlooper, United States Senator from Iowa. In this spontaneous and unrehearsed discussion, the opinions are necessarily those of the speakers. Senator Hickenlooper, what are your uh, committee assignments in the Senate? Well, Mr. Hadlett, I'm a member of the uh, Senate Agricultural Committee, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, and a member of the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy. Well, you will also go as a delegate to the Japanese uh, treaty negotiations at San Francisco on September 4th, won't you? Uh, yes, we leave uh, on Friday for the uh, Australian and New Zealand treaty signing on Saturday, and then uh, uh, for the Japanese treaty, which be, uh, uh, preliminaries and uh, negotiations, which begin on Tuesday following. I'd like to ask you, Senator, what you think the uh, Russians' purpose was in finally consenting to go. Do you think that their main purpose is going to be to uh, block the treaty? Well, I think, Mr. Hazlitt, the overwhelming opinion is that the Russians uh, will attempt to block the treaty in any way they can and, uh, and disturb the situation, but uh, it's entirely possible the Russians might sign the treaty in order to keep their finger in uh, the Oriental politics, and especially Formosa. That probably is remote, but I still think it's a possibility. Well, from our standpoint, what does the treaty mainly accomplish? The treaty, I think, uh, is a very generous treaty. It accomplishes uh, the orientation of Japan and uh, uh, many of the uh, uh, Far Eastern countries toward the West rather than toward the East. In other words, toward the, the uh, free countries of the world rather than toward the communist uh, bloc. What do you think of the failure, of the, to the failure to invite the Chinese nationalists to the treaty? Well, I think uh, that that is a, a, is a, a, a very deplorable thing. Uh, personally, I think the nationalist government of China, which uh, fought the Japanese for years, even before World War uh, II began, and that suffered more casualties than all the other nations in uh, the world uh, fighting the Japanese should have been invited to sign this treaty. That's my personal opinion. Senator, uh, this week in New York, the Veterans of Foreign War is holding a convention, and a good many of us who were out in the Pacific at Guadalcanal and Iwo Jima and Okinawa, we have rather long memories, and we are wondering if uh, this treaty isn't uh, too lenient with the conquered nation. Well, uh, uh, Mr. Huey, uh, the treaty undoubtedly is very lenient. Uh, and I uh, <coughs> could, couldn't find it in my heart to blame any of the boys who uh, were out there, and especially those who suffered uh, uh, at the hands of the Japanese uh, if they resented it. Do but you think the reparations... Must be, we must be realistic about this situation. Do you think that the reparations we're exacting are sufficient? Uh, we're exacting uh, practically no reparations, uh, uh, largely because at the moment, and for a good many years at least, there is no foreseeable source from which the Japanese can uh, pay reparations. Uh, they'll have uh, all they can do to support themselves. Well, will this, will this treaty mean, uh, will it, will it uh, lessen the burden on the American taxpayer? Uh, in my judgment, yes. I think it will relieve the American taxpayers of uh, a large portion of the uh, <coughs> present amounts we're spending for occupation and uh, uh, the feeding of the Japanese people. Now, I'd like to know this, sir. 
Uh, is this a nonpartisan or a bipartisan treaty? It's been drawn by Mr. Dulles. Is it a Republican treaty or is it Democratic or is it nonpartisan? Uh, no, I think uh, it is a, uh, well, it's an unpartisan treaty. Uh, I think Mr. Dulles has been very firm in his stand. I think he's done a, a very outstanding job. The treaty is not satisfactory. I, I think Mr. Dulles uh, might say to you, although I don't know, uh, that it probably is not fully satisfactory to him in all its particulars. Certainly it isn't to me, but uh, I think it's, a, it's a, yeah. the best treaty you can get under the circumstances. And uh, uh, I, I think that it probably will receive support from both parties. Senator, does the treaty mention anything about Yalta? The no, treaty? the treaty doesn't say anything about Yalta except in reverse. The treaty says that no nation that is not a signatory to the treaty uh, can uh, in any way claim any title or advantage uh, from Japan as a result of the war. Well, is that provision satisfactory to you? No. Uh, I would prefer to see an affirmative abrogation or a statement that the, uh, the nefarious agreements that were entered into at Yalta are repudiated by the American people as unauthorized because there was no authority for those uh, unconscionable agreements at Yalta. Do you foresee a time, Senator, on that point? Do you foresee a time when the United States Senate uh, may forswear the uh, Yalta agreement? Uh, I foresee opportunity for that, Mr. Huey, and I earnestly hope that the opportunity does arise before too long uh, for the United States Senate and the Congress, if necessary, and for the American people to say that those agreements at Yalta were not authorized by the American people and have no force and effect and no legal standing whatsoever. I'd like to ask you a question that's a little apart from the uh, treaty, but it's uh, closely involved. What do you think of the British action in recognizing uh, Red China? Well, uh, uh, the British have been a great diplomatic people over uh, many centuries. Uh, uh, we presume they're intelligent, but uh, from my viewpoint, uh, they did one of the most uh, 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 unintelligent things when they recognized Red China and sent an ambassador to Red China, and Red China hasn't even recognized the British yet and doesn't even recognize their ambassador. I think they did it to, to save Hong Kong, and uh, in my uh, book, uh, the minute the Reds uh, consolidate their position in China, they'll take Hong Kong away from the British, regardless of recognition. So I think it was a, a fantastically inept thing for the British to do. Uh, Senator, I'd like to say nothing of what it's done to the uh, diplomatic relations among the people that are trying to fight communism over the world. You've been on the subcommittee, I believe, investigating the MacArthur situation. Well, uh, the, uh, it was the Foreign Relations Committee and the, Na and the National Defense Committee of the Senate. The I two see. committees joined together. I see. What do you think I'm about... I'm a member of the Foreign Relations Committee. Do you think that uh, General MacArthur will be at the treaty signing conference? Uh, Mr. Huey, I don't know whether he will be there or not. I think it would be... Uh, uh, a magnificent thing if the conference invited General MacArthur to come. Uh, I, I assume if it did, he would come. But he is probably the, the, uh, uh, the most respected and uh, uh, admired man in, uh, in Japan and in most of the Orient. Now, this latest development in Korea, the latest uh, bombing of Rasheen, uh, do you think that that uh, vindicates uh, General MacArthur's previous conduct of the war? Well, I think the whole record uh, vindicated him long before this. Uh, Rasheen was a marshalling point uh, for supplies for the uh, North Koreans and the Red Chinese, has been ever since this war in Korea started. He wanted to bomb it. It's uh, ordinary, normal military strategy to hit the enemy where it hurts. Uh, the State Department uh, refused to permit our armed forces to bomb ration. Finally, they've got around to the necessity of bombing ration because the Reds are building up this great force. I, I think, it, of course, it, it's merely physical proof that uh, uh, MacArthur was trying to fight a war as a military man should fight it to win. Uh, Senator, what do you think? What would be your own summary of the most important findings in the minority report on the MacArthur hearings? Well, uh, there are a number of them, quite a number, and I can't go canvas them all at the moment. Uh, uh, one, of course, is that uh, 
that uh, the hearings proved conclusively that we had and have now no plan to implement a program of victory. MacArthur did have. He had a plan how we could win victory over there. Uh, I think they proved that, uh, that uh, there just is no, uh, is no plan. The uh, witness after witness said they didn't know how we proposed to win a victory. I take it you don't think these negotiations are leading us up to a victory? Well, up to now, the negotiations have given a lull of uh, a good many weeks during which the Red Chinese have been able to get uh, new supplies and new equipment from their Red allies, uh, the Kremlin. And uh, they're building up their power so that they uh, will just have power to strike if, as and when, uh, uh, the battle starts again. In, uh, I mean, in its full fury, it's going on a little bit now, but uh, there is a lull during which they build up their strength. Well, Senator, as a final question, I'd like to come back to what is your overall opinion of the Japanese treaty and what it will do? Well, uh, my overall opinion is that the Japanese treaty in the main is a good treaty. It has two or three things that I dislike about it. As I told you, the, the, the failure to invite the Chinese nationalists to sign it. I dislike that. Uh, secondly, it, uh, it does not repudiate the Russian claims to the Sakhalins and to Port Arthur and the railroad concessions and so on. It does, however, uh, give Japan a new lease on life as an independent nation. I think it orients Japan toward us more than it does toward Russia and toward communism. And we shall just have to see what the future and future developments work out. It's up to our own uh, good relations with the Orient to see that the gains which we have made are, are, are uh, retained. To sum up then, Senator, you would say that uh, a as the Republican leader, as a Republican member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, you would say that the committee is gen that the treaty is generally hopeful for the American people. In my opinion, it's more on the plus side than the minus, substantially. Thank you, Senator, for being with us. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Mr. Henry Hazlitt and Mr. William Bradford Huey. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Burke Hickenlooper, United States Senator from Iowa. The opinions expressed were necessarily those of the speakers. And now, let's go to Paris. As you approach Paris in the west, you get your first glimpse of the famous Eiffel Tower. This monumental structure, 985 feet high, was erected for the Great Paris Exposition of 1889. And 21 million visitors from all parts of the world came to see it and the other wonders that were there. Among the exhibits were fabulous displays of watches, products of the world's finest watchmakers. At this Paris World's Fair, an international jury of experts honored Longines with the grand prize, the highest of all awards. Longines watches have been similarly honored by 38 World's Fairs and international expositions, garnered 10 grand prizes, 28 gold medal awards, a record unmatched in the watchmaking history. Yes, it can truly be said that throughout the world, no other name on a watch means so much as Longines, the world's most honored watch. This is Frank Knight, inviting you to join us again next week for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines, sold and serviced by more than 4,000 leading jewelers from coast to coast, who proudly display the emblem Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. This is the CBS Television Network.